Do you consult Wikipedia for medical information? Are you finding many medical articles on Wikipedia to be excellent? I'm cheering this trend. Back in 2006, I predicted that Wikipedia could be a model platform for trusted medical information. And one of the reasons why it's gotten so much better in recent years has been because of Wiki Project Medicine, a collaborative effort spearheaded by Dr. James Heilman, a Canadian emergency medicine physician. Recently, Dr. Heilman found a collaborator in Dr. Amin Azam at the University of California, San Francisco Medical School. He recruited five medical students and together taught them how to edit articles in medicine on Wikipedia. It's gotten quite a bit of national attention with articles in the New York Times and The Atlantic, and I wanted to find out how it went. So I asked him, enjoy the interview. Overall, it was a success. Um, like any first course or first time one does something, there's always room for improvement. So I'll share some of the areas that we need to work on to make it better. But the, the bottom line first is to say it was successful enough that we absolutely intend to continue the course or offer it again in the future um, as soon as uh, two months from now, in fact, in March of 2014. So, um, we weren't sure how many students to expect. In the end, we had five students enrolled in the elective. And just to remind you the structure of the elective, it was targeting fourth-year medical students at UCSF. Uh, we limited our enrollment to that student population at first because we wanted to make sure uh, we worked out the kinks. So the way we structured the course, we had two full face-to-face -face days of time between the students, the five students enrolled, and then the faculty and volunteers affiliated with the course. So myself, we had two medical librarians, and we had uh, volunteers from the Wikipedia uh, editing community, as well as uh, the Wikipedia education program, and a couple of other uh, organizations I can say more in detail. But uh, most importantly, also with the Wiki Project Medicine uh, group of Wikipedia volunteer editors. So we had some face-to-face -face time with the students in which we explained Wiki Project Medicine, we explained how to edit Wikipedia, how to create an account, how to uh, use article talk pages. We talked about how we were selecting articles for the elective. We talked about the concept of digital citizenry, um, and we uh, then also um, engaged with the students around Wikipedia's uh, Wikipedia Zero project, how these articles were going to be translated into other languages through Translators Without Borders, and basically gave them a lot of background information about how the elective fit into larger efforts. Okay, great. So they did this for a four-week period of time, roughly, right. and how many, how did they choose which articles they should tackle, and how many ultimately were edited? Sure. So, uh, the Wiki Project Medicine uh, volunteer group has um, a list of high priority articles, and they've selected, they rank ordered that list of what they call top importance articles in, in medicine or in the medical field based on both the number of unique visitors to those Wikipedia pages and the public health importance, or if you will, the global burden of disease. And so this is how those top 100 articles have been uh, listed. The articles themselves all have, are all being graded, or there is a rating, a quality scale for the article. So as, as may be the case in other areas of Wikipedia, articles start as a stub of an article, then they move to a start, then they move to a C quality, then a B quality, and then we skip the letter A and go up to what's called a good article quality status. Um, and then the highest caliber an article could be is what's called a featured article. In the Wikipedia Medicine project area, there's a lot of articles that are pretty low quality. So I invited our students to prioritize articles that were in the top importance category, but in the lower quality, if you will, a C or a B quality article, to see if we could raise the quality to the higher good or featured article status. So when the students understood that these were high importance and low quality articles, I encouraged them to pick any of those top 100 uh, that were in those, the top roughly, I think there were probably about 50, 57 articles they could choose from that still had work, the room to grow and work on. 
I didn't require them to pick one of those articles. I strongly encouraged them. So four of the five students picked an article in the top 100, and one student chose a different domain that he was particularly passionate about, um, even though it wasn't in the top informed category. But how does one know which articles your students um, edited and can actually look at their contributions and the whole world can actually see what you've been up to in those four weeks, right? Thanks for that. So we have uh, <laughs> we have to put our money where our mouths are. So our course, unlike other uh, university-based courses, we didn't have a course page behind the university firewall. Uh, we actually created a course Wikipedia page. And so we have a course page. I don't remember the exact page name, but I'll send that to you so you can include it in the links. Um, and that course page lists all five students' uh, Wikipedia names. They chose to either be anonymous or, or, or declare who they were. That's part of the Wikipedia culture. And it lists which articles they chose to work on. And so I'll just share, because it's all publicly out there, one of the five students worked on an article called Race and Health. One of the students worked on an article uh, called Cirrhosis. One of the students worked on an article called Alcohol Withdrawal Syndrome. The fourth one worked on White Blood Cell. And the fifth one worked on Hepatitis. So these are the five pages that they contributed to. And one can easily go to those Wikipedia pages and see what it looks like now. Uh, uh, because they edited using their Wikipedia names, you could also look up the history of the Wikipedia article and see all the edits that they actually contributed to by seeing the history of the article. I agree Great. fully. I think one of the terrific things about Wikipedia is because every single edit, every change, whether it's a comma or something substantive, is recorded and you can basically track it back to an individual user. So there's a lot more. It doesn't all happen behind a, a, a closed door the way most revisions in medical content are made. You know who made it and what exactly was made, and you can compare it to previous versions. So there is really potential for a very high degree of accountability with Wikipedia, much more so than in traditional medical literature. So it's a... I totally agree with you. To build off of that, one of the things that I think was an eye-opening moment for my students was when we thought about, okay, we, for example, many of them use a private sort of, uh, or a aggregation of medical content called UpToDate. It's widely used right. in, in medical uh, education and widely used by trainees, um, but uh, I, I asked the students, well, who writes those articles? Well, they assume they're physicians that are writing those articles. That's fine. Well, do those, are, those physicians get paid by UpToDate? Or exactly how does UpToDate choose right. who those people are? So there were some aha moments there where the students realized, you know, um, UpToDate is great. Well, and then I'd say to them, well, how much does UpToDate charge our library for the institutional subscription to that resource? And some big aha moments when they realized the open culture ethos of, of Wikipedia and the opportunity, because the Wikimedia Foundation is not for profit, uh, to, to see doing larger good, doing larger social good, which is concordant with their desires to be doctors, after all. Um, so they saw a lot of value in that open ethos that is a big part of Wikipedia. Good. The, the, I mentioned earlier this concept of digital citizenry. Um, our students are used to being digital consumers of all sources of information. But one of the things I hoped we would help them understand is this notion of it is perhaps not yet the professional norm that physicians contribute to the digital community, blogs, for example, or Wikipedia, open sources. It's, it's, within academic circles, it's we are expected to publish, for example. We're expected to write things, and can, you know. But but um, but if we can help our students move towards a place where they see themselves as being that it is their professional obligation to contribute to the digital community, then I think we've done a great service to the world. Because if all physicians were out there editing Wikipedia, the quality of the information on Wikipedia would increase radically faster than when we are only going to Wikipedia uh, to look up information and not making it better ourselves. Uh, I'm speaking now on behalf of the, the, the larger health professional community. So, so I really do think there's lots of room for growth and improvement, and I would love to see other schools copy our elective. I'd love to see other health professional institutions improve on it. Um, so when we analyze all the data for how our elective went, we'll absolutely put that all on the, our Wikipedia page so that other institutions can do us one better. I'd be thrilled because it's all about doing better in the world and really making the health community be a part of the, 
uh, digital citizens. Okay, well, that's great. And hear that, medical institutions, please copy Dr. Azam because it's really wonderful. And while you're at it, redo your tenure system so that it's not publish or perish based on your traditional closed peer-reviewed journals, but really rate clinicians on how well they share trusted information and how much how committed they are to doing it because we're going to help a lot more. We're going to really improve patient care a lot more if we all get serious about that than publishing in some obscure academic journal that few people read and is a great financial burden to university libraries. So more Wikipedia, less basic science, obscure journals that very few people actually access and and read. So say, tip of the hat to you. I will say that I agree. And sort of academic tenure systems are absolutely long overdue for some digital sort of uh, reassessment of, of what we do as faculty. Um, UCSF sort of a tagline is advancing health worldwide. And I would offer my five students may have made larger contributions towards that tagline in the one month of editing Wikipedia than some of the faculty members who have published articles, peer-reviewed articles to be sure, um, Wikipedia has its own version of peer review, but, um, but I think that uh, if there's a way to measure the impact of our efforts at advancing health worldwide, then by all means, we should have our faculty members' uh, advancement processes based on some of these uh, other metrics, and uh, so I couldn't agree more. Well, that's great, and that's both a great um, achievement for you and, as you infer, kind of an indictment of, of academic medical centers who aren't so good at sharing. So let's hope they follow your really excellent example and get on board with, with sharing trusted information as a primary mission of education. You remind me that one of the other unexpected things, outcomes of this elective was, uh, and it was thanks to the press, uh, there were many people who approached me about um, having my students help them contribute to Wikipedia. Now, I'm talking faculty members from other institutions as well as my own, as well as other intellectuals from other sort of domains. And many of them said, uh, you know, if your students want to edit this article, I'd be happy to sort of lend my expertise. Um, and I think what the message I took away from that was, my generation and older of uh, physicians or other health professionals grew up in an era when we'd say, pish posh, Wikipedia is bad. Uh, we are now at a point where we will admit that we go to Wikipedia to look for information, and we will actually say, it's okay to contribute to Wikipedia, but I don't yet know how personally, but if the students want to, I will help them with that. And so I thought, I think that's a nice shift. It's a realization that Wikipedia is here to stay. We're no longer shamed by admitting we use Wikipedia, and our trainees are ready to edit it. And so maybe there's some room for some partnership there around... Uh, Okay, well, more power to you. You know, uh, when I started Medscape back in 1995, we had a Skunk Works team of five people. I'm sitting now in the offices of a startup that I that I helped create, and there are about 70 people here. That also was started by uh, a group of three people. So the five, your five students, and you really can change the world and contribute to Wikipedia, which already is changing the world and has made such a difference in millions, really hundreds of millions of lives. So thank you very much. And please, institutions, copy Amin Azam and his five students. They're off to something big and huge. And every clinician in training should be a part of it. And more clinicians should practice what they're actually doing. So best of luck to you, and we'll check back after your next class. Thanks for the opportunity to share some early lessons learned and hopefully best practices. I, I agree, and I'm looking forward to doing uh, more.